Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Arsenal. Back with the latest news video, a lot to get into today. Obviously, we now have a couple of days until the end of the season. The Euros is coming up, um, the Copa America is coming up, but most importantly, the transfer window is coming up. And we know we have some, I mean, obviously this one is not over yet, but obviously expect Man City to beat West Ham. If that happens, we have to push again next season and another busy summer transfer window for Edu and Ateta. We have to keep going. Just like I said um, at the beginning of this um, season, only Man City can finish ahead of Arsenal. I, I'm keeping the same... Um, Thing for next season, I feel like only Man City can finish ahead of Arsenal, so we just need to focus on them and how uh, how we can cover the the two points if it finishes um off with them um, two with them um two points ahead of us. So we have to find a way to close that gap. And you're talking about maybe losing at most two or three games in the season and maybe four draws or something like that if you want to beat them next season. So you might have to you know match this season, match what we did this year. And then obviously pick up a couple of more wins, like against a West Ham and a Fulham. So you're talking like 30 wins, 92, 93 points to win the league next season. So we have to have a very busy transfer window. And the first piece of news is from uh, Benjamin Sesco. Um, uh, not from Benjamin Sesco, it's about Benjamin Sesco. So this is what... Um, uh, Sam Dean um, had to say about um, Benjamin Sesco. Arsenal have strong interest in Benjamin Sesco and are considering um, a summer move for the Slovenia international. Understand that rival clubs believe Arsenal are now in pole position um, to sign the striker should they choose to formalize their interest. So in the article, it goes on to say, um, Arsenal have strong interest in RB Leipzig striker Benjamin Sesko and are considering a move for the Slovenian international this summer transfer window. Telegraph Sport understands that the, that rival suitors believe Arsenal now in pole position to send the 20-year-old should the North London side choose to formalize their interest. One of Arsenal's top summer priorities is to strengthen their front line and Sesko, a six-foot-five um, centre forward, would add a, add a different option to Mikel Arteta's attack. Sesko previously spent four years at uh, Red Bull Salzburg before transferring to RB Leipzig. He was regarded as the teenage prodigy um, in the early part of his career and has scored 13 goals in 30 Bundesliga matches this season. So uh, I, I'm sure some of those are like sub appearances and sometimes he gets taken off. Um, they, have, they have a lot of players Leipzig, they have Zavi Siemens, they have Openda, so they have a lot of players um, like playing in the forward uh, positions. Sesko has enjoyed an impressive run of four in recent weeks, scoring in each of his past six matches on the international stage, he has struck 11 goals in 28 appearances for Slovenia. Um, according to German reports, Sesko's release clause previously stood at about 43 million. However, Sky Germany reported earlier this month that the clause has um, increased as a result of his excellent performances and now could rise up to 64 million. My goodness, Evan is just so expensive these days. Um, but that's what you need to do to get um, quality strikers these days. Uh, now, a couple of, um, I think, five, six days ago, maybe a week ago, we did a, um, a whole like um, show with Cozy talking about the strikers. Um, and I did say like my top three strikers would be Alexander Isaac. Um, like if I had my own choice to pick strikers, Watkins would be in the top three. Isaac would be in the top three players like that. And uh, Yokerez. But if it's from the strikers who are available, I'd probably go for Isaac or Yokerez. Um, But Sesco is, he is an option. It depends on what you're trying to look for in terms of um, age and also ability. Now, a couple of years ago, what I wanted at Arsenal was a different sort of striker. So I was like, we have Jesus, we have Martinelli, we have Saka in these forward positions. Everyone can, you know, contribute assists and goals and all that. Uh, but when Jesus doesn't score, when Ketty doesn't score, sometimes in the last 10 minutes, we put in a lot of crosses, but there's no one to score. So uh, two years ago, I wanted a striker like, um, not Giroud, but a striker like Giroud, a striker you can bring on and, you know, just put in a couple of crosses and you can get to the end of them or knock down some um, some of the crosses to the, the other players are playing in the poor forward position. Positions. But that has changed now, obviously. Now, I feel like um, to go to the next level to compete with Man City, we have to keep on improving. Now, we know there's some players who are going to leave the team. We're going to talk about them in this video as well. Um, I did say in that video as well, I don't think we can improve on Saliba right now. I don't think we can improve on Odegaard right now. I don't think we can improve on players like Gabriel right now. These players are very good. They need to be in the, the, the first team for the next you know, few years as well. Uh, not just uh, this and then uh, Odegaard is on the bench next season. No, those are players I see like, uh, you know, they're still going to be starting next season. Same with players like Ben White. The position that obviously you can get competition in is um, 
someone to back up Saka and obviously a striker. We've never really tried a striker who can um, score, you know, 30 goals, 40 goals in a season and is going to, um, you know, get um, at the end of those Odegaard passes, Saka passes, Trossard passes. Odegaard has created close to 100 chances this season. Imagine that, uh, like, even 40 of them fall, fall to, to the striker. Like, that would be incredible for the striker. The striker would absolutely enjoy himself because that is not only getting the chances from Odegaard, he's also getting them from, you know, um, Trossard, from Harvard, from Saka, from Ben White. So a striker in this team would really enjoy himself. So Sesco is 20 years of age. He's about to turn 21. Um, as we said, uh, as uh, the article said, I mean, his numbers are not, are not that great, 13 goals in 30 matches. It depends on what Arteta is looking for as well in terms of age. Do we want a younger striker? There were talks about us getting a younger striker to come and fit into the team. We could also go for, you know, a 26, 27-year-old in the team. Uh, could you go for a player who's going to get involved in both the goals and assists like Yokores has this season for Sporting? Are we going to go just for a focal point? A player who's just going to stay in the box and, you know, score the goals and um, just that, I mean... I wouldn't mind that because you already have a player, a striker who wants to, you know, play on the wings and come back and get the ball and get involved in duels in Jesus. Personally, I want Jesus to stay because it brings something different to the team. Uh, you can come off the bench sometimes. You can play on the wing sometimes, maybe even cover for Saka. So we have to wait and see what happens with that. But for Sesco, he is an option and um, it would cost around 64 million, as they've said. Would you be willing to pay 64 million for Benjamin Sesco? Let me know in the chat. Um, in the comments, or in the chat, in the comments. This is not a live stream. The next player we've been linked to is um, from Benfica, another young player. First time we've had this name linked to Arsenal, and that is this guy um, from Benfica, according to... Um, according to... Uh, I can't really see the name, uh, but yeah, uh, let me just read the thing first. Uh, TB understands, I think it's Graham Bailey, that's his name. Uh, TB understands that Arsenal have added uh, Joa Neves to the list of midfield options and have intensified their scouting of uh, the Benfica star in the last six weeks. Um, we'll also come to the Martin Supermendi one. So that's from uh, Graham Bailey talks about um, Arsenal being linked to um, Joa Neves. Um, he currently plays for uh, Benfica, as um, you can see. And uh, there's a lot of very good players who've come from Benfica over the years. I remember, I think, David Luiz to Chelsea. Um, I mean, you can argue if Nunes is a good player or not. But, you know, class players like Joao Felix was signed by, Atle by Atletico for like 100 million. Um, but... Uh, this is what uh, Graham Bailey and Charles Jones had to say. Arsenal are now looking into signing a midfielder who runs even further than Declan Rice. Imagine that. A midfielder who runs even further than Declan Rice. Now, that would be something. Arsenal are stepping up their efforts to sign out the, one of the most promising Europe, uh, promising young midfielders in Europe. Arsenal have been linked with the number of... Um, a number of midfield options heading into this summer, and now one of the most co uh, coveted midfielders in Europe has been added to their list of targets. The Gunners have done plenty of great work in the transfer window in recent years when it comes to signing young players, and another young um, star could um, soon be added to the ranks at the Emirates. Um, also looking at Joao Neves, they also say, um, uh, obviously they, they go on to say what uh, I've just read for you, but they also say the Gunners are working hard on bolstering their squad for next season and defensive uh, midfield is uh, a defensive midfielder is signed as a key uh, signing along with left sided defender and a new forward. So we are linked to Joa uh, Neves, another um, young midfielder um, obviously and the city runs uh, quicker, than, runs farther than Declan Rice. Now I don't uh, regularly watch uh, Benfica or Sporting or FC Porto, those teams, you only really get to watch them like when they are playing in the Champions League or the Europa League or the Conference but that's another player we've been linked to. Obviously, midfield is a position we need to um, strengthen. Jorginho just signed a new contract. You know he's going to stay. We know Rice is going to be here next season. We still don't know if Pat is going to be here next season, so we have to wait and see. But Joao Neves, uh, let me know what you know about Joao Neves. I've not watched him a lot of times, but as I said, he's very, very, very promising. I um, mean, he's only 19 years of age, but he's not the only midfielder we are linked to. We also linked to Zubi Mendy, as we know, another player we've been linked to for a couple of months, maybe even a couple of years. According to Graham Bailey again, Martin Zubi Mendy remains Arsenal's top choice and the club are busy trying to work on a deal with Mikel Arteta himself working hard to persuade the player to make the move. However, Arsenal are also um, doing their due diligence on other targets if Zubi Mendy proves um, unattainable. So that's why you're hearing names like Joao Neves. That's why you're hearing names like Bruno Guimaraes. 
that's a, a position we definitely need to improve as um, as well. Now, Georginia has had an incredible season. Pat has been really good since he came back. Rice has had an unbelievable season. My Premier League player of the season. All of them have been uh, really good. But you want to, you know, have different options. Uh, one thing that um, I can say we haven't done really well over the couple, last couple of years is the cup competitions. I know Arsenal can, you know. I mean, we've been unlucky with a couple of draws recently. Like, we faced Liverpool in the first round in this year. Last year, we faced Man City in the fourth round. So, yeah, sometimes that that is 50-50. You can face Man City and lose. You can face Liverpool and lose. But there's sometimes we've gone out to Brighton at home. You know, we've gone out to Nottingham Forest a couple of years. Those, those kind of games. We've gone out to uh, Sporting in the in the Europa League. So Champions League quarterfinal, that's what they predicted for Arsenal this season. We got there. But in terms of the Carabao Cup, I thought this one would be like at least getting... I actually predicted Arsenal to win the Carabao Cup this season because I thought, listen, if we have like a first team and then the second team is like... Uh, I imagined at that time, like, hey, Harvard will be in the second team. He'll be playing there. Trossard will be playing in that Carabao Cup team as well. Even if you rotate, you have players like Kivi, you have players like Timba that time, Zinchenko, you can play White or Tommy as well. I was like, we have a very good score to go find the Carabao Cup, but obviously it didn't happen. And it was um, uh, sad because Man City went out to the Carabao Cup early. So if you had passed um, we had passed that game against um, West Ham uh, in the Carabao Cup this uh, we don't know how far it would have gone. Um, it's going to be interesting. But we need players like to strengthen the midfield so that when Rice is tired, you can rest him and you can have players like Zubimendi play. You can have both of them playing. But it's not the only option. Um, in case he doesn't want to um, move out of Spain or Sociedad or he doesn't want to come to England, doesn't want to join Arsenal for whatever reason, we have to have different options. Now, um, that is the midfield in the striker situation. You're obviously looking at defenders as well. And um, Hato um, has been talked about a lot. According to Fabrizio, Arsenal keep monitoring Ajax Young centre-back Jarrell Hato as one of the best centre-backs, uh, best talents in Europe in, the, in his position. He's already been scouted for months and Arsenal keep following him. Um, Hato signed a new deal until 2028 at Ajax recently. Arsenal remain interested. So I did say my priorities are a winger, a striker and a midfielder. I, I don't necessarily feel like we need a defender. I want all seven defenders to stay. I'm comfortable with Zinchenko staying and playing some games, maybe in midfield as well. If I, if your game, it's a game you're going to have a lot of the ball, you can play in left back. I have no problem like most people have. Um, I don't feel like he's a calamity pretty much. And you can play some games in midfield. Maybe that's what you need to, to do. Um, and then Timber will back, Tommy has. So obviously you need to hope as well that injuries don't occur. But I feel like those defenders um, are good enough. But I also did say, if a defender like Hato or Branthwaite becomes available... It's, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to try and go for them, depending on what uh, how our budget would work out. They said we might have like around 200 million. So for me, I'd be looking for a striker or a, or a winger. But if, for example, they go for Sesco and they pay like 50 million, you have like 150 million remaining. If they decide to go for a winger like 60, 70 million, you still have like 80 million remaining. So uh, we've not even counted the players um, who might leave the team. Depending on, um, speaking about uh, players who might leave the team, let's start with Rhys Nelson, players who can add to our budget this summer. Uh, uh, according to Fabrizio Romano, another name to watch at Arsenal is Rhys Nelson. It's a possibility that he could be leaving the club. There was interest in Nelson last summer, but he ended up signing a new contract. Still, he will now consider proposals in the summer in Arsenal too. They are not desperate to part ways, only in case there's a good proposal in the summer transfer window. So, Remember, he signed a new contract um, at the beginning of this. So now, here are my feelings about Tris Nelson before and now. Three, four years ago, I was of the opinion like of um, Tris Nelson and Ketia. Nah, for me, just let um, Ketia move on to Wolves and just let Nelson move on to wherever he was going at that time, Germany or wherever. That was four years ago. Now, obviously, I had a different idea and Ketia uh, started playing for the team. Uh, he's always been in the team. Nelson went to a couple of loan spells and then he came back. Now, before the start of last season, um, Ketia just signed a new contract um, after his performances against the likes of Chelsea and United in that 2021-2022 season. But Tris Nelson, um, I think... I don't we don't we don't think we even saw him playing that season a lot at all. So I thought Nivris Nelson would definitely leave Arsenal before the beginning of last season. I thought he, he had definitely um gone. Now I still think he would have gone, but he got injured. I think it was pre-season or something, and then we couldn't really sell him, and then he stayed on with the team. Now he still got injured, I think, until like September, October or something. 
But whenever he came on, like I remember that game against Nottingham Forest last season, he came on, he scored, I think, five goals. He had a couple of goals or something and an assist. I can't remember exactly. And then, obviously, um, that famous goal against Bournemouth, his sub appearance against um, Southampton in the 3-3 um, comeback in the last minute. He had an impact in that one as well. Got an assist and, I think, a goal in that game. And we are awarded him, we rewarded him with a, um, a new contract. Um, and people are like, listen, no problem. He had a very good impact. He can be coming on for Martinelli or coming on for Saka. Uh, but this season, it hasn't really been that way. Now, there's many reasons. Um, he Sometimes he came on on the left. Uh, actually, those games he played against Bournemouth and Southampton, he was playing on the left side when he was scoring those goals and getting those assists. But um, this season... Um, okay, last season, Trossard had not joined Arsenal yet up until January, but this season now, it was very hard because now we have the option of playing Jesus on the wing. Trossard is not, Trossard's numbers are very good on the wing. Martinel is not even playing because of Trossard being really good. So all of a sudden, you have three players on that left side who can play. Chris Nelson cannot play there, but we thought maybe he can be coming on for Saka. But we do know that the moment you move Saka, and uh, whether people think Saka's had a good zone or not, he had like more than 30 goal contributions. I don't think Chris Nelson can get to those numbers even if he plays every single day. Now, the, the gap between you know selling Rhys, uh, like subbing off Saka and bringing on Chris Nelson, you usually can tell the quality gap. And Obviously, some of the games that he's played this season, Rhys Nelson, like the one against Luton, he played Louis Smith with Smithrow. Smithrow was great, but Rhys Nelson was a bit disappointing. So there's always that. There's some few games I would have preferred Rhys Nelson to come on, like Aston Villa away when they're playing a high line when he took off Martinelli in that game and brought in Trossard. In a game like that, I would have preferred someone like a, a, a Nelson with pace in behind, but he hasn't really gotten too many chances. And when he has, he hasn't really like um, shown like that to be like, yeah, he needs to start next game. And... I mean, I think of the recent when he started that, started that Luton game, I think they said something like that is his first Premier League start in like four years. So he's definitely not a, a certainty. Nowhere close to being a certainty is not a regular in the team. So you have to look for different options. But as they said, as Fabrizio said, he doesn't really have to go. He doesn't really want to go and maybe it doesn't really want to sell him. But if an option, uh, uh, a team comes in for him with a good offer, then he might sell him. What about these guys? Um According to Ryan Taylor Sports, Cedric, Elneny, Okonko will all leave Arsenal upon the expiry of their contracts at um, the end of next month. So there's that as well. Uh, I mean, you're not going to get Cedric uh, anything for Cedric, Elneny, and Okonko. They'll all leave um, for free in the next few um, few weeks. So all the best to them. Uh, but that's just clearance of uh, you know wages and um, squad numbers and all that. Um, but there's a couple of more players who will be leaving in terms of uh, the youngsters. Um, Kido Taylor Hart, according to Fabrizio, uh, I mean, Taylor, Taylor Hart confirmed on his Instagram and Twitter, he'll be leaving Arsenal after 13 years of the club. The club has quite literally seen me grow and um, go from a boy to a man, saying that it's time to move on and I'm excited for what the future of my career holds. So, um, always look promising. Taylor Hart, always seen videos of him over the last four years of how good he is in the academy, but um, he's decided to move on. So, all the best to him. And same with Walters, but Walters, uh, we always felt like, Walters was about to play for the first team, but it never quite happened. And he said to leave Arsenal after the exper- uh, um, at the end of his contract. He's 19 years of age, but he's also expected to leave Arsenal. Um, there's some games maybe I feel like, yeah, maybe he could have gotten a chance, like the PSV game in the Champions League away from home, the dead rubber game. But uh, doesn't feel like, uh, I mean, in terms of defense, I mean, that's like our strong point right now. So... And I just decided now nah, I'm going to play Gabriel Sal- Saliba's played every single game all this season in the league. And Gabriel is great. And Kivy is there. We have different options. So I can't really see him playing. And we are being linked to other defenders as well. So all the best to um, to uh, Walters as well. So um, one more is about Chesney. We are linked to Chesney in terms of replacing our Ramsdale. But we'll cover that in a different video. But that's all the transfer news in this one. Let's hope this one still ends great. Let's still hope we beat Everton and a miracle happens if it doesn't. It's a really, really busy transfer window. We need to close that. Those two points um, gap uh, between us and Man City is going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. As always, let me know what you make about all these choices. Thank you for watching and I'll catch up with you guys on the next one.